Hi, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Meet Gistics podcast. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, you will see this is a very special episode. There is no Austin, but I am not alone. I've got Brittany and Gabe. Both of them are from Pass It On Outdoor Mentors. We've had Brittany on the podcast before. Absolutely great guest. Gabe is new, and we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like to be uh, what do we, what do you call yourself? Just a mentor? Yeah. Just a mentor. mentor. Okay. Yep. So let's talk about why you got involved. So of course got involved whenever, uh, Brittany called me up and asked me that, that of course <laughs> is always, always a thing, but you know, I, I met her through, um, BHA our our state, uh, group that I belong to that I'm a, a chapter member of. And, you know, she called me up and said, you know, we have deer hunters. We have a bunch of kids that are going to need mentors to go on a deer hunt. Um, I thought, well, heck yeah, sure. I've in the past, I've guided a little bit and I've, I've done a lot of on my own taking people hunting, but I thought, yeah, I've never taken a kid who's, who's done, not done this before. So sign me up, took me, uh, we all met up, um, had a great, it took one day to do it. It was just a one day deal. Didn't take an entire weekend, but, um, we had so much fun. It was such a blast. Um, something that I now plan on doing that that's going to be in my rotation for hunting every season. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Very much so. And uh, so we've known each other about a year a now. Whole year, I've seen probably. you three or four times. Every time I see you, somebody talks about how you pushed them into something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a very long list of IOUs to people. <laughs> but you don't come off as no. pushy. So I'm not. I just say the right words. <laughs> there you go. That is a skill. That's a, a very marketable skill to get people to do what you want them to do and be happy about There's it. There's one tagline. It's for the kids. Yeah, that's right. That, that, does make it easy it to does. sell, doesn't it? It does. Oh. It does. All right. So real quick, you mentioned BHA. Probably most of our listeners know what that is, but just real quick. So most of the states in the country, we have backcountry hunters and anglers. Um, you know, we're a nationwide conservation group that our biggest thing is we want to keep public lands in public hands. Um, you know, we're huge advocates for the greatest thing we have in this country, the most, the absolute thing that makes us the most rich in this country is the access to our lands that we have and what we can do on them. Um, you know, the United States is pretty amazing for what we are able to do. We can go out our back door and go on thousands and millions of acres, um, get lost in the wilderness, get lost on a lot of lands. And it's just, you know, there's no, there's nothing like it anywhere else in the world. Um, you know, with our state chapter, Kansas doesn't exactly have a lot of public land, national forest. Right. Yeah. In fact, we only have about 2%. Um, so we're, we're pretty low on the ladder when it comes to that compared to other states. But we do have a wonderful walk-in hunting program. Uh, we have a lot of great state fishing lakes. We have all kinds of wonderful public opportunities. So our chapter group is, you know, we are highlighting that, yeah, even though we don't have national forests, there is so much opportunity out there in the state of Kansas that we want to get everybody outside and everybody on those lands and waters. So one of the things, uh, Pass It On is the easiest, well, every organization we work with has their high points. Pass It On is the easiest one to get excited about. I, mm -hmm. I mean, anytime you guys ask us anything, we're like, yes, absolutely, yes, of course we want to do that. A, I mean, it makes you feel good, but B, you're out there creating future hunters, which are future customers for us. So it's, yeah. I mean, it's a perfect thing. But when I think we had Mike on the first time, one of the things we talked about is a lot of these kids, this might be the first interaction they've had with mm -hmm. like the hunting world. It gives them a, a positive interaction with a firearm, For which sure. is incredibly important. Um, I know you, are you still working the uh, shooting club hunt? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Tell us about yeah. that. How's that going? Yeah. Our um, shooting sports outreach program is it's done really well. Uh, we served about 220 kids last year, last September through May, and we've already served close to 500 this year. So we've, uh, we're, we're stepping up our game yeah. <laughs> and it, yeah. it's going really well. <laughs> is that, is there just excitement from the kids on the program or are they looking for something to you do? You know, yeah, I think it's both. I think we've, ex we've kind of uh, reached certain people and the word's starting to get out. We hired a part-time coordinator, cool. um, Eric Brown with Kansas Hunting and Fishing, and he'll be coming on full-time in April. So we're excited to see what capacity we can, we can do with him on full-time. And I, I think that's it. I think we're talking to the right people, word's getting out to the right people. And I think people are just excited to, to get, take a kid outdoors. And I mean, you said it, best just a few seconds ago when you said sometimes you're the first 
positive interaction a kid yep. has with the outdoors. And it's it's when you can take a step back and say this is my responsibility and it's a privilege that I get to take this kid, I think it gets people a little excited. Cool. Yeah. That that is awesome. Uh so Mike holds mm-hmm. the the record so far in getting me closest to crying on the podcast. Hamburger it was with helper. the hamburger helper. <laughs> if for anyone who hasn't, go back and see the first time yeah. Mike was on here. Absolutely wonderful story. Um, you've been with them since 2019? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2019. How many kids have you taken out? Uh, two brothers is mainly what I've taken out. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's, uh, but it's one of those things that I was kind of surprised when I first started doing it because like I said, I, I grew up hunting just like most everybody that I know, you know, in BHA and stuff like that. You know, we grew up with that positive influence from our moms or our dads, you know, to get us outside. There are so many kids that they have that want to do it, but their parents never had, mm. they, they didn't grow up with that hunting and fishing to some extent it's a it's a tradition it really is it's yeah. a huge tra- tradition if you know if you don't have anybody to show you hey this is even the most basic stuff i think i take for granted they have no basis for right. you know? so it, yeah and outdoor mentors i mean the first time that i gotta go do it you guys aren't looking for professional hunting guides nope. you're not you're, you're looking not. for somebody who can as far as i could tell have firearm safety mm-hmm. you know be that positive influence for a for, for a child and even their parent, which that I got a big kick out of that too, yeah. was, you know, it's not just the kids, it's the parents that we take with them. That, oh, you take yeah. the parents yeah. as well? Okay. Yeah. I was, yeah. Right? yeah. 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 Oh. So for like turkey hunts, deer hunts, when we have um, kind of like a smaller space situation, we want to make sure all parties are protected, right? So we never want to put a kid in a blind alone with a, an adult that's not their parent yeah. or legal guardian. Okay. So what better way to encourage a parent to go along? One, you're inspiring them to get involved in the outdoors and you're showing them how excited their kid is to get involved. And I think in the long run, that creates a a higher likelihood that this kid's going to keep hunting because their their parent has witnessing. I mean, literally, you're in a pop up blind. Yeah. You can't get any closer to right. your kid yeah. shooting a deer yeah. than that. So it's pretty cool. They, uh, the, when I, the first time I went out, I was put in an elevated blind <laughs> with this kid and his mom. I am not a small man. I am six foot two, two forty five. I am a I'm, a I'm a big boy. It looked like something from the three stages. <laughs> they had two office chairs and a bucket in this thing, and it was trying to get legs and uh, arms and get the kid up there. And, you know, it, it was it was comical at best. He got a doe. It was the greatest thing ever. But I just I get, I think about that all the time. I'm like, that was just you talk about just a crazy thing that was going on yeah. to get that deer. Thank God she came in and was totally oblivious to it because I think if she would have looked up, she would have seen like <laughs> nine <laughs> arms and legs and, you know, my head sticking out of the blind. And, uh, oh, but it was, yeah, it's just, you, I couldn't have asked for a better day for that. It was, it was, it was just amazing. I'm but, pretty sure I got text from you, the mom yeah. and the boy that you yeah. had with Lucas, maybe yes, I think it was Lucas yeah. called me like within like a 24 hour span, like this was awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to go again. And that's just like, all right. And, and I've taken those kids just on Love my it. own several times. Now yeah. mom's called me and said, Hey, would you be willing to I said, yeah, you come with us. We're going to go. And you know, my thing is okay. So we went and did it with that outfitter on their land. And then yeah. I'm like, we're going to go on public land. I'm going to show you what kind of what I, how I hunt, oh. you know, and it, it is a little different. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, those kids, I think I could drag them through anything. They're just so excited to be out there. I and those were two kids whose parents had no experience whatsoever. None. Uh, none, none. None. I mean, you know, it was grandpa did a little bit, but they just, yeah, yeah. just didn't know. I mean, and it's, it, it's amazing how fast everybody picks it up. Mm-hmm. It really is. You, yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's, it gives a lot to me just doing yeah. that. You know, it, it really does. I mean, even though I enjoy getting up at, you know, five o'clock in the morning to go do it, I have to think I'm crazy to do that if a you know 12 year old's willing to do it too i mean it's awesome it's awesome to see that fire lit in them it's fantastic yeah and i mean i know we've said this numerous times across all the podcasts we've Mm. done but it is incredibly important to give these kids that positive interaction not to get too crazy but second amendment is not scot-free anymore people are going at it getting younger kids involved showing them like hey this is just mm-hmm. a tool it's all it is just a tool use it responsibly yeah and you can Ethically. have positive outcomes now if you get a a pheasant or even a turkey to some degree fairly easy to process mm-hmm. what are you doing with kids who have no experience in their family with a deer they're bringing <laughs> it's it to always the, processing the first place. question what do i do with this thing <laughs> yeah that and is. can i put it in the minivan <laughs> yes yeah exactly 
<laughs> how yeah do we deep fry the whole thing <laughs> no we don't <laughs> yeah. so no. uh, i know on, on my hunt you know they yeah. offered you guys offered take it to a processor yep. um i took their deer and processed it myself with all of my walton's branded equipment there you go i really do. Go. I, I have I, I do. I, I process everything Scorn myself. Scoring some brownie points Absolutely. down there. But I do. I process everything myself. And I thought, yeah. oh, what's one more dough? So um, it was interesting, though, because, yeah, once the deer's on the ground, you know, it was, OK, you're going to help me. We're going to quarter this. We're going to do this in the field. I'm going to show you how to do this. So and yeah. it was, you know, it's funny. You would think there would be apprehension with that. Mm -hmm. I pretty much had to stand back when, when I put the knife in that kid's hand. It was like, OK, here we go. <laughs> all awesome. in. That's it was awesome. all in. It oh, was. Yeah. It was fantastic. But and yeah. These are 12 year olds? Are they uh, twins? Or are they yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. One was like one. I think they're only like maybe one or two years. Yeah. I think oh, they're like one yeah. year apart. Um, yeah. They had just completed Hunter Ed yeah. at, at the Lake Afton class like that September and this yeah. October rolled around. I was like, hey, I got the perfect opportunity for you guys. You want to go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't find many boy 12 year olds who are going to be like eh, icky. Yeah. Yeah. I would say most like of them are right like, in. yeah, let's let's get after it. Yeah. But on yeah. the girl side, I have seen on some of your Instagram pictures, there is yeah. some ladies that hardcore get after. Yeah, I, I encourage mean, get it. After, get after. <laughs> I'm like, come on, girls, yeah, you I, own this. I think there was one on Instagram where you guys were hunting Havelina. And yeah. I'm like, anybody who is willing to go touch one of those suckers. <laughs> oh, yeah. My God. Yeah. It's, Not just uh, touch, but clean. Yeah. yeah. The girls love it. It's uh, a creepy looking animal. Well, and, and they just, stink man, to hide. I was going to say, just, there's enough seasonings just, uh, in your showroom, I think, to make one taste Maybe. All right. Yeah. But, dude, they. They reek. It's pretty bad. You you smell them before you see them yeah. when you're in Arizona. So ah. that's a thing. Yeah. Have either one of you ever done uh, wild hogs with kids? No, we haven't. That'd well, you know what? I, I say that. Isn't dangerous, maybe? Right. Yeah. I think that um, Eric does a couple youth hunts for wild hogs down in like Texas through okay. the Kansas Hunting and Fishing page. But outdoor mentors, we haven't. We're trying to kind of broaden our range. We mm. just did a coon hunt for the first time. Yeah. Under, did you behind really? dogs. Yeah, okay. it was great. I know nothing about it. So, of course, I was pretty hands off, but the kids loved it. Out Where in, like, was the it? the Leon area. Okay. Yeah. How many did you get? Uh, two. Two. Two kids. Okay. Two coons. That's, nice. a, yeah. that's a win. That's exciting. <laughs> that's really yeah, exciting. That's a win. Um, What are we doing with that meat? You know, I don't know what they did. Okay. I oh, you can eat it. I got to follow up you with can. that. You can. Yeah. You can. I don't know. My grandpa used <laughs> We grandpa always told us, oh, yeah, they're great barbecued. My, my, I grew up trapping. One of my youngest memories was putting up a big fur shed with my dad, running big trap lines and stuff in the winter. And I'll never, my grandpa, he always said, oh, bring me one of these raccoons. I want to eat it sometime. Okay. So we did. Brought it over. <laughs> he cooked it. Man, it was um, terrible. I'm like, you must have been really hungry when Yikes. you were young. It was, yeah. I will add that to my list of uh, I, javelina. I, I, look, I look at it, uh, I guess. <laughs> no, I would think record yeah. would be better than that. Yeah. I guess but. if you're hungry, that's where it yeah. comes down. If you're yeah. hungry. So, what do they say? Hunger is the ultimate seasoning. Yeah. yeah. And it makes anything taste you're good. You're probably yeah. right. But I did eat raccoon in Texas and it was fairly vile. <laughs> like, I remember eating that. And, like, and then years later, yeah. uh, Always sunny in Philadelphia. Yes. Where they eat the raccoon yeah. meat with all the, I was like, oh God, I must yeah. have some sort Don't of do parasite. It. Yeah. 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 Absolutely yeah. terrible. Yeah. But speaking of broadening out into other things, yeah. um, I did see in your newsletter that turkeys, we have turkeys. Are start being a thing. We're, we had to cancel our turkey hunts last year. Okay. Yeah. And I think it was so right, it was right after right March, I came time. on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We put the lid on all of our turkey hunts just with the uptick in COVID. So, and I'm that, pumped to like get these back on the books. I'm yeah. experiencing a little bit of like PTSD though. I'm like, oh no, is something gonna happen? Yeah. <laughs> but we've got about 40 hunts on the on the yeah. calendar right now, with a few more coming. Uh, most of them are during the youth season. Season, so like April run through 13th, we've yeah, got a ton perfect. of hunts open that, of course, adult mentors can't uh, hunt during that time. Right. So what else are they gonna do? Sure. Get out and practice their and turkey besides, call with a kid. Yeah. <laughs> Calling them in is, is the hunt, man. Yeah. That's, and, you know, Brittany, do you have to know how to call to be a mentor for the turkey hunts? No, I would say some experience would be good. Okay. And this is when I'm all about getting any mentor with any type of experience involved because okay. I know some deer hunters that are mentors for us, but they aren't 
super great at field dressing or a little like, oh, I need some direction still, as so do I. Like we're all always learning and continuing this process, right? So I always encourage them to not let like that one thing not yeah. get them involved. Now, if I know somebody who has turkey hunting a lot, but is gosh awful at calling like myself, <laughs> I would say come along, but I'm probably going to make sure there's another person in the blind just to gotcha. make sure okay. we have some type of success. Sure. So you've, yeah. you've taken kids deer hunting? Oh, yeah. I, yes, through outdoor mentors, yeah, I've taken kids deer hunting. Okay. Is what, is what I've done. Um, I've, on my own, I've taken people turkey hunting mm. and okay. stuff like that. I uh, I was not much of a turkey hunter until about, oh, probably 12 years ago. And I blame my brother on that. My younger brother, Jordan, <laughs> who lives down in Parsons, he's a paramedic. He is a calling nut. Okay. That guy he can ruined talk. It for that you? guy can talk turkey. So he took me out one time, uh, and you know, it's all it took was once. Yeah. See this giant gobbler show up, and he's I don't know what he's saying to it, but it's doing everything it should. So this is the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. Got me hooked ever since. You know, I got into the calling and all that stuff. So yeah, it's I definitely plan on doing a lot of the. Yeah. As, uh, yeah I can't wait to go out and do some youth hunts with you guys. It's going to yeah. be so much fun. Um, talking to Brittany too. I know some of the properties you guys have, like you said. Kansas did not have the best nope. turkey year in 2019. We had a lot mm -hmm. of flooding, but we're hoping that, yeah, our turkey numbers will be really at least better yeah, this year. Yeah, I think they're down a little bit from what I can tell. In yeah. certain areas, they're more down than others. But where our properties are, you know, our landowners are really good about telling us no. If yeah. the population is just not there, they're just not yeah. interested for the season but a lot of our landowners obviously had said yeah we've got them come yeah. come hunt them a lot of our areas we hunt are kind of in the leon roselia area el dorado area where a lot of turkeys were introduced in kansas yeah. so right. it's kind of heavy population anyway so yeah so with covid 20 or yeah 2020 how many yeah. hunts did you have to cancel <laughs> Uh, we canceled pretty much our entire turkey season that was about 30 to 40 ish yeah we did no fishing trips uh, it was pretty quiet. Yeah. yeah, I applied for a lot of grants. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's a good thing, I <laughs> you guess. You know, it was yeah. kind of a great moment for us at, with Outdoor Mentors, though, because I think we could sit down and have really strategic conversations about growth and what we need to do. And, you know, we were able to expand into Iowa this I last year. Yeah. yeah, super exciting. We put up 17 hunts there. You know, I've been to Iowa twice. Um, but that's just how excited people there are to get involved. It made it that yeah. easy to plan these hunts. And so hopefully because of that time frame we had, we were able to, you know, adjust finances and figure out where we needed to go. Our funding's up 44% because I think we just have been connecting with folks like you guys at Walton's to get more exposure and yeah. do more creative raffles. And well, your weekly gun raffle is yeah. probably, uh, we sent out an email and Mike called me and said you'd made like $10,000 on yes. just people buying. And it, that's such an easy one because just consider a donation. Mm -hmm. And then maybe one Wednesday you're going to have bucks. the best day of the year. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's just 100 bucks. Three tickets. And every Wednesday then becomes fun. Yes. Because you just wait yeah. and you wait and then you see that email and then you click on it and then it's not, not your, your name. name but <laughs> yeah. one of those times it might be. casual messages and Snapchats of like, man, really wish this was my name. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I would like to, to make, I, you guys need to do something though. <laughs> Dr. Jed Reese can no longer win anything from anything. I know, anything. That I know. Dude is so lucky between winning the BHA stuff and mm -hmm. then winning a gun. I yeah, I'm we'll like, put him on the no-fly list. I'm but like, it's you, probably, uh, yeah. I mean, he's probably <laughs> Sorry, buying <Jen>. more <laughs> yeah. tickets than that. That's like Austin's won a few guns, and yeah, I'm Austin sure Brad's has. won. Um, Austin hasn't picked up one of his guns from like two years ago. Yeah. You should just put it back in the pool to be good. Yeah, away. No man. Yeah. I think Jed Austin told me to ticket. come get this. Oh, did he really? <laughs> yeah, and he said on Sunday he said I can come out to his house and look at a shotgun. So there we go. Mm. Thanks, Jed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, we were driving up to. I don't remember where we were going. Oh, Minnesota for Pheasant Fest mm. a couple of years ago. And I'm in the front seat with Brett. Austin's in the back seat. And Brett just shows me the phone. goes, look at this. I looked down and it said Austin Walton. And I was just so angry. Winner. So angry. Very <laughs> salty. Very <laughs> salty. The other drawing you guys have yeah. is for that deer hunt. Yeah. yeah. I am telling everybody, if you want to hunt an incredible unit for whitetails. Yep. That's it. Buy those tickets. Yeah. That is, I have seen more big deer come out of that area yep. in Kansas than it's most it's it good is, stuff it's incredible up there. yeah let's yeah. talk about that we've yeah. got um drawing happens march 28th so we're like ticking down the clock yeah. here 500 yeah. tickets are sold 20 bucks each yes. um it's a five-day hunt 
uh, rifle or archery. You take okay. your pick with Bell Wildlife Specialties. And a little history on Bell Wildlife Specialty. We've been working with Dave there, I mean, since the program got started back in 02. He would have, you know, anywhere from like six to a dozen kids come up and turkey hunt, deer hunt. I mean, just the the most giving individual you could ever cool. uh, imagine. So we're thankful for his partnership. And he does this, this raffle with us every year almost. So it's really cool. So how much are tickets? So $20 a ticket. Okay. 500 are sold. Five, woo, that's pretty good odds. Yeah. It's it's very good odds. Fantastic odds. odds. Oh. Not to mention, it's yeah. kind of like take your take your pick. You want archery or you want rifle. That's that's really yeah. cool. You're not limited to one selection. Yeah. Not for to a mention, guy who plays yeah. that tag game every year and sends thousands of dollars to other states for tags, just hoping to draw mm-hmm. something, that raffle has better odds than a lot of stuff that I put in for. Yeah. It just does. I mean, it you get your dollars worth. And okay. then you know it's at least going to something way it's going to something really tangible. It, so, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. what I love to tell people and like encourage them to buy tickets. Yeah. Like, so you don't win, but you just yeah. got like five kids out pheasant hunting. Yep. Thanks. And I mean, that's just really cool that that money goes straight into getting kids outdoors. Yeah. Yep. And then, so this will be released next Monday, which is the 15th. Yep. So for anybody in Wichita, um, on that night, we are doing, well, Big Al is throwing yeah. the, uh, I don't even know what he's Wait. calling it. Do you? Big Al's. Is this birthday, birthday bash? bash? Yeah. Is it his birthday bash? That's yeah, May. Yeah, but I thought it was it was like postponed and rescheduled. It's and May. Is it is May? It, yeah, May 15th. But there's some... Yeah. Is I just hit the May panic 15th? button for a second. I'm like, it's wait a May minute. 15th. We've got two months until that. Yeah, it's I was May told 15th. it was March 15th. Whew. Oh, okay. So that's further <laughs> out. All right. So for everybody still, we'll talk about it. Yeah. You, you have more time now. So it's May 15th. <laughs> yes. They both start with M. Well, You're going to have to forgive me Here's the deal is we've we've scheduled Big Al's 55th birthday bash yeah. so many times we might as well schedule it to be the 56th birthday bash, yeah. you know, okay, COVID props. This is the thing <laughs> where there's a lot of different organizations coming together. Yes, okay. this is cool. This is so Big Al, everybody knows him, right? He just yep. like loves conservation and loves kids. So he's like, you know what? We should do, we should have a party, a birthday party. Let's bring all the conservation groups together. They can run their own raffles at yep. their booths. We have a live auction. So if somebody wants to, throw a live auction in there they can um pass it on outdoor mentors does get 50 percent of the gate which is really cool so every ticket sold we get half that ticket sale um that's exciting to us and huge and again goes back to getting kids outdoors uh matt ingles band will be there that's cool great band Mm -hmm. love dancing them i think i heard them in dodd city when i was in high school multiple (laughs) times like that's how great they are um it'll be fun it'll be a lot of fun Anybody who's played Dodge City Days, it's exactly. a Exactly. It will be. Exactly. <laughs> and then, so what you said, all of the organizations will have their own raffle. Um, Colton and I are still kind of deciding exactly what ours will be, mm-hmm. but it'll be a grinder and something else we don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we're going to donate all the money to pass it on. That's right. Awesome. That's so, right. You guys are the best. We try. We try. I mean, are you going to bring your giant brand new smoker trailer? Yes. Oh, oh man, that yes. thing is fantastic. So today is uh, Employee Appreciation Day, and yesterday I made Supreme Pizza bratwursts, and I ground up hard log pepperoni yeah. and put that in there. Wow! And then we had that out this morning. We got it all the way up to like 550 degrees, just to we hadn't done that yet. So wanted to see Let's what would see actually if it'll happen. Blow up. Exactly. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> um, but then cook the brats on that. That thing is awesome absolutely Sweet. awesome uh the plan is eventually to kind of show that off and then sell some of those units but cool. the real advantage of yeah. that unit is just having it yeah it's, it's cool. fun to play with yes absolutely uh i the last two times i've used it i've not brought my truck to work so i've used this little dolly thing oh i bet that's fun but here's the deal it doesn't seem like it but our entire parking lot is at a slight angle and both times pulling it out, I'm like, why is this so hard? Mm. Putting it away, no problem whatsoever. It's like a CrossFit workout. Yeah, a little bit, a <laughs> little bit. I remember when Austin pulled up with that thing. It was the last time I was here talking to Colton about BHA stuff. And I'm like, if you're in the mood to grill 500 hamburgers at the same time, you, <laughs> Call me. you've got it. Yeah, that thing is huge. Yeah, we're going to do a, a whole hog on yeah. it. Uh, so Colton's been out for Sweet. a week or so in, in that range now with Something good news, but don't want to say it. Uh, as soon as he gets back, we're going to do all sorts of cool. stuff on that. Yeah. So, that's yeah. exciting. Heck yeah. That's exciting. 
All right, so you were mentioning that you missed an enormous turkey. We're going to need to hear that story. <laughs> yeah, thanks for reminding You're me. <laughs> so um, new to turkey hunting, and I go out for the first time. Pretty excited, very nervous, because that's just how I am. And my buddy Dave calls in this beautiful Tom, again, whose beard is like dragging the ground between his legs. And he's, I mean, he's right in front of me. <laughs> I could how far? throw a rock at him. Okay. Probably kill him with a rock more i apparently i probably should have thrown a rock at him <laughs> so i shoot and i shoot right over the top of him this bird kind of looks over at me and just takes off and my buddy goes you're never gonna live this down and every time i see him he reminds me how i miss the biggest bird he's ever seen and he's been turkey hunting let me let me tell you he's got a hat right baseball cap and he makes a mark every time he takes somebody turkey hunting whether it's a kid or adult the first turkey I shot with him was, I was number 86, and that was three years ago. So that gives you yeah. some idea of how many birds he's called in. And nice. the fact that it was his biggest one, it's like, yeah. oh. <laughs> so really, I missed Don't that bird on purpose because I didn't want to set myself up for disappointment every yeah. bird after No, no, that. you wanted him to have another shot at it. Yeah, it's you know. so yeah. kind of you. Super generous. Right. Thank you. Embarrassing hunting stories? Do you have one? You want to tell the... Uh... Hey, that's up to you. <laughs> you can tell that one or not. I've the uh, the biggest turkey okay. I've ever called in um, was for my brother in law after a night of having one too many good times. <laughs> I believe the term is I stole happiness from the next from, from the next day to have fun that <laughs> night. And I may I was you know paying for it at four thirty in the morning as he he was a brand new turkey hunter to it, and I thought, please God, just. Get me through this morning so I can go crawl in a culvert and die. <laughs> and sun's coming up, put on the face mask, put a diaphragm call in. Bad idea when you've got that gag reflex going. Let out a few putts. I'm thinking, ah, nothing's going to show up. A head shows up on this horizon over this hill. And I'm thinking, that's actually a gobbler. So <laughs> start going to work on it. He comes over. Same thing. Beard dragging the ground. There's another beard sticking off of him. His head's changing, you know, red, white, and blue, doing everything. He's coming into the decoys. And I'm thinking, this is actually going to happen. It's going to happen. And I'm thinking, oh, just let him come in so we can actually watch him in the decoys. Of course, my brother-in-law, Chris, he's he's so excited. I think it got mm, about 30 yards to the decoy and boom, yep. drops it. Like, oh, that's fine. Thank God. Take the diaphragm call out of my out of my mouth. I think I laid on the ground for probably a <laughs> solid 10 minutes while he's doing a victory dance. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, yeah. So I uh, I learned real quick. Don't don't mix two types of pleasure together. There you go. There you that, go. Yeah, that is a good yeah. rule. We've got yeah. some pretty good archive videos of uh gosh, these kids shooting turkeys off of buckets and like flying off backwards and coming back up. Did I hit it? Yes. We have one video. I think Michael Pierce might have filmed off to check that, but this this turkey came in and just completely attacked <laughs> the decoy and ran off with it. Like he was not having it. Yeah. I, All on video and you know it's like old, like early two thousands because it's like super fuzzy filmed. Right. Yeah. And that's one of the coolest things about turkey hunting. I mean, I've had coyotes come in, try to steal the decoy. I've had bobcats mm -hmm. show up, owls swoop down and try to get I mean, it's just the really? stuff that can happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the life of a turkey is is not a good life. They are nervous from the time they are born <laughs> to the they time. They should be. They should be. Everything wants to eat them, yeah. no matter if they're on the ground. I'd always think when they fly up in a tree every night, they have to think, oh, God, just let me go to sleep. You know, because they are they're so nervous. And that's why they're so manic yes, all the dang and time. They, you know, they scare each other. But I'm like, man, your life is just nothing but severe anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, yeah that, they taste so great. That's why yeah. everything <laughs> wants to eat them. <laughs> I mean, you've got rabbits and turkeys and yeah being lower on the food chain than we are is not good it's not it's enjoyable. not fun yeah. absolutely not um all right so you've taken kids deer hunting mm -hmm. have you ever taken kids pheasant hunting anything I, else or is it just deer you and know I, turkey? man i'm probably deer and turkey i am i'm the world's worst upland hunter <laughs> Um, I'm terrible. At it. I don't you follow know. a lot. I, uh, no, I can, I don't know why I can hit everything with a with a bow and a rifle and a and, you know and a turkey coming in. And just this last year, I took a shotgun out to Western Kansas when we were deer hunting. I thought, well, I'm going to shoot some quail. So me and my brother-in-law get out of the truck. We find quail. I think we shot seven times. We we hit none. Well, they are hard to hit. Quail they are were hard. literally as close to me as this Dr Pepper <laughs> well, bottle. I could have hit I'm them with the to shotgun. Give you it some. was. 
Um, yes, I was, you know, it reminded me of, what is it? Uh, not old school wedding crashers. I don't even know what a oh, whale hey, is. Hey. I'm like, we are terrible at this. <laughs> so, oh. The, in my opinion, the best thing about upland hunting, not so much duck, but pheasant hunting, quail hunting is the ease of access to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. You just need a shotgun and you need to know a farmer. You don't even technically need a dog. Yeah. You mm -hmm. really don't. I mean, they make it easier for sure, but it's not a necessity. I mean, when we're talking about deer hunting, you want to get a deer rifle I and mean, you can do it with a shotgun. Not mm -hmm. as many people do anymore, but I mean, you can do it with a bow, but then you've got this large carcass on your hands and you got to know what to do with it. Yep. Pheasant, yep. none of that. I mean, yeah. literally anybody could do it. Yeah, even um, turkey. I mean, you could get set up for turkey hunting for less than 300 bucks. Yep. You go get a Walmart shotgun, which is going to shoot just as good. Decoys are not expensive. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's you, you could do it so on the cheap. You really could. I, I mean, and that shotgun, you're going to be able to use it for rabbits, squirrels, pheasants. Yeah. I mean, it's you can use it for so much. It's a great segue to get into everything in the outdoors. Cool. It really is. Absolutely. And let's not forget home defense. Yes. Use that, that shotgun for home yeah. defense That's too. That's for darn sure. Uh, so... <laughs> Is it fair to say that this program for the wild turkeys is going to be a focus of Pass It On this year? Or is it just another program? Well, it's, I would say it's still part of our same program. We okay. just have turkey hunts on the book. So okay. we, we, we schedule hunts under the same program. So it's not broken up? Okay. Nope. nope. Okay. Yeah. Well, we kind of group things by like hunting season. But for the most part, we plan... What I like to, well, how I kind of like to explain it is we like to provide continued hunting opportunities for the kids. So like, yeah, it's great that we do pheasant hunts once a year, turkey hunts once a year, but we want to get these kids out on like every species possible that we can. So it's yeah. kind of an extension of that. So yeah. you've got uh, obviously deer. Yep. You said you had we did Javelina. a hundred deer hunts this year. Really? Yeah. yeah. Between the youth season in September, the October season. We did a few during rifle season and then in the January season. And what's your success rate on those? Pretty good. Really? I think if I totaled it up last year, we were in like the 60 percentile of yeah. kids harvesting. This year especially was really good. I don't know what it was. It was great. We had a fantastic deer season this year. I, I thought it was. I, I got married uh, during the October 10th season. Yes. Thanks. So uh, I, I, yeah, got married during the pre-rut season of Kansas, and Mike still holds us against me. He goes, why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> I don't know. I look back, I say, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. it was great because by the time the next day rolled around, I opened up my phone. I had like 50 pictures of dead deers yeah. and just like the happiest kids ever. I'm like, yeah. this is great. <laughs> so they're happy when... Obviously, it's successful. Tell me a little bit about what it's like when it's not successful. Yeah. You know, I think we do have those occasional kids that are just like really beat up about it. But for the most yeah. part, we have kids who will go duck hunting or pheasant hunting and not see a bird, not fire their gun. And they'll say, when can we go again? Okay. Yeah. I think it's just the thrill of getting out there and getting the chance to do it, getting trusted with the opportunity to shoot a bird, yep. shoot a deer. Yeah. The, I, I think trust is mm -hmm. probably a big part of it. I remember being a kid and being super excited when I was like allowed to do something that yeah. might potentially be dangerous to others, not because I'm a psychopath, but because I'm like, all right, right. I'm being trusted here. Right. There's I need a lot to take of responsibility yep. associated you know, And I will say team. this, with the outfitter that I went the first time mm -hmm. with you guys, they did a deer camp-like experience, yeah. which to me, that is that is something I so wish was more popular in mm -hmm. Kansas. I mean, everybody loves big antlers, right? Uh, the deer camp though to me is is what is going to build and save hunting mm -hmm. it really is it's that you know after we all got done hunting they had all the kids stand up on the old fireplace in the yeah. old house <laughs> tell the story of what their hunt was mm -hmm. you don't get that if all you did was well, i only have this property to me nobody else is allowed on it it's just I, I, that type of stuff right there you do not have to pull a trigger to have an experience you don't get with anything else yeah there is nothing that replaces a hunting camp yeah. Nothing like it. That particular hunt too, I love. And that was actually one of the first few, I volunteering wise back in 2015 was some of the first deer hunts I went on. And, uh, you know, they do the whole spiel of at the end of this barrel is death. Like they yeah. get into it, you know, going over ethics and proper safety and how you don't get a second chance. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. this is it. And even to the extent of, um, one of the landowners, he crumbles up like a piece of paper casually and throws it on the ground. I'm always like, what? And I noticed this at first, and Mike had to fill me in why he does that. But he goes, I want these kids to recognize that the opportunity of being outdoors, being 
on land that's not theirs to pick it up and say, did you drop this? Did you mean to? Or did you drop this? Here you go. Or just throw it away. Yeah. And it's just so cool to see that, like you said, that deer camp yeah. um, aspect. It just teaches kids so much more than, you know, shooting a deer. Yeah. Yeah. Being respectful to landowners, yeah. especially in Kansas, closing gates, picking up trash and helping a little yeah. bit has got me access to some of the best hunting ground I've ever had. And it's just being five minutes of courteous. That's all mm -hmm. it is. And those kids, if they can learn that, there'll be a future in hunting. Mm -hmm. And well. if they can learn to go up and knock on a door oh, and, and not yeah. be terrified, right. they yeah. don't have to. It's yeah, it's that still applies. I mean, mm -hmm. just just ask. Yep. And with kids, a lot of them get told yes. Yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. It's it's for the kids. Yeah. Again, yeah. Landowners, if you're looking to, you know, put some of your land to use, give me a holler because we have a lot of kids out there who 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 wanna have the opportunity to go, who don't know don't know how to go knock on doors, right? Or don't have right. folks like you and us sitting here talking to Colin and say, Can you take me hunting? Yeah. And mentors, sign up. Yeah. Sign up. That's you get so much out of it. So how do you identify kids as like we want to get this kid in the program. Yeah. I know you do the the shooting program and that's yep. fairly like, yep, okay, you like guns, you like shooting, let's cross over, sure. that's easy. But uh, just a regular kid, how do they get picked? Yeah. If it's picked? We very, that's such a, you know, we, we cross that line all the time because it's like, well, why do we have to limit it just to the shooting sports kids? Well, we want to see what we can do with that demographic and like really bridge that shooting sports to hunting. You know, how can we convert these kids who are passionate about shooting sports now to hunting? We have kids all the time come to us or parents saying, hey, my kid just turned 13. He has Hunter Ed. He doesn't shoot on a shooting sports team, but what can we do? And we do work those kids into our program. Oh, it's a matter of asking. Yeah. yeah. It's all about a matter of asking. I knew the parents that yeah, he took I'd out. Yeah. I'd say, yeah, the, the first kid that I took out, mm. I don't think he had ever shot a rifle. No. And, he, you know, it was. Yeah. I, you know, so I hand him my, my dad's 243, which that was the gun all of us kids in my family have shot all of our first animals with, you know, it's, that gun is older than me. So it's, yeah. you know, and this kid shoots his deer with it. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. awesome. It's amazing. It just is to me. I mean, it, yeah. it adds even more sentimental value to sure. it. So, that yeah. mom in particular called me and said, my boys just told me they want to not play soccer and they want to go hunting. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know what to do. And I said, I have the perfect solution for you. Yeah. Here's Lake Afton. You know, they're doing a hunter egg class. Take yeah. them. And then I happened to have a couple of spots open and we worked them into it. Um, yeah. Kids in Big Brothers, Big Sisters, we still have our traditional program, of course. So kids who are matched to a mentor, like I have a little sister, have for like seven, eight-ish almost years now. I've gotten her into hunting, so we do set up hunting opportunities for those matches and mentors. Um, so that's another kind of population we reach out to. That's yeah. awesome. And yeah. uh, I believe it's a newer program, the the shooting to hunting. Yep, yep. But you had a great year last year. We did, yeah. 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 Do you want to talk we, about your numbers? It was, it was fun, yeah. So our first year out of the gate, it was just me kind of and, and Mike just trying to figure out how to structure this program, get it started. But... Uh, we were able to host 89 hunts and served wow. about 220 kids. And that was, of course, with turkey season getting canceled right. on us. And so fast forward to this year, we kind of got our, you know, our shoes on. I think we're headed in the right direction. And we were just able to put up a lot more numbers, bigger numbers. I think just because of the awareness of the program, landowners started calling us saying, hey, I have a, a deer problem. You want to send me six kids? I'm like, oh, yes, damn, I do. <laughs> and the same with, you know, upland hunts. We started reaching out to preserves and um, even outfitters and just said, hey, can we can we pay for four kids to come out and hunt with you? Like they need to learn how to do it. And upland hunting can be a pretty big challenge for some kids who have never shot a live yeah. bird before. So yeah, those are be. those are great ways to do a controlled hunt to get them out hunting and feel like safe and successful, I should say. Um, so, so far we've done 182 hunts God. with 40 ish more on the books. And then, um, we've served just over 500 kids. Wow. Yeah. It's wow. exciting. That's all, it's, yeah, it, it's, it really it's exciting. It's really exciting. That is super cool. Yeah. Uh, you're from, you're not from Kansas. You're yeah. From, Western you Kansas. Okay. Western Kansas. Southeast Kansas. Southeast Kansas. Yep. All right. Well, in New York, it's not the same passion for hunting i mean mm -hmm. people hunt but not to the same degree like it's not something everyone's family does so i grew up i had shotguns a few times with one of my friends who's a absolute complete gun nut um but the first time i ever went hunting was down in texas we went quail hunting nice. um and 
told the story before, but we're on private land. Guy drove us out in his truck, walked the field. Quail comes up. Nobody else even raises their gun, but I go, shoot. All of a sudden, I can feel people looking at me. Oh. And I'm like, what, what did I do? And then I hear, ting, 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 ting. His truck was in the background. Yeah. And so I peppered his truck up. <laughs> So absolutely embarrassed. Uh, I almost never went hunting again. I'm like, all right, yeah. well, I'm not doing that again. But then we went yeah. turkey hunting, I think like, I think it was that same same year. Maybe it was the next year. But yeah, no, turkey hunting is another one that's fairly easy to get mm -hmm. into and just awesome. Yeah. And at the end, you've got a delicious yeah. animal on your hands. I mean, yeah. pheasant is good, but it's not as delicious as wild turkey. Yeah. I don't think so, at least. Yeah, wild turkey is, if you like turkey, it's turkey times a thousand. Is right, what it exactly. Like. It, yeah, you, that's a good way to It is. Yeah, good way you, to put you'll, it. you'll never taste a turkey like it. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Um, yeah, there is, uh, they don't, even though they're big, they don't come fat. They don't have right. those giant breasts like they do. Yeah. The legs got a lot of pin bones in them, but uh, man, there's so many good ways to make mm -hmm. it. There just is. And it's, um, yeah, it'll, if you like turkey, it'll ruin you. <laughs> because <laughs> it yeah. doesn't get any more no. organic than that no it doesn't I mean, no if organic's good wild's best you know what's funny is having kids shoot turkeys and then like put two and two together like oh yeah. this is the butterball thing that my mom <laughs> would go and buy at the grocery store i'm like yeah but wild and Kinda. you gotta pluck the feathers <laughs> exactly so get at it yeah <laughs> it's it's cool to to show them that yeah, and you cut open meat. the you know the craw and go, what do you think they've been eating? Mm. Now, what are you talking about? Mm. That you know, it's <laughs> like it, you know they just it, it's so cool what it opens up for them. Yeah, it's it's direct connection. Yeah, this is where food comes from. Oh, for sure. So I know you do some pro some of your own processing deer. Yeah, and have you taught kids up on doing that? Um, a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean you know family members and stuff. Yeah, it's um I'd say man in the last couple of years we've kind of went crazy with thanks to your guys' products, making, <laughs> seriously, I mean, yeah, we we had that one night with B, the BHA thing where you guys taught us how to make, you know, bratwurst and yep. stuff. Man, after that, we went crazy about Good. what you can make. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm. And also, this podcast, the Meat Gistics, it's been awesome for tutorials on how to do it. I cool. mean, this stuff, yeah, it's, it, it just extends hunting camp for us, mm -hmm. is all it does. You know, and that's actually what I'm going this weekend. I've got an antelope, part of an antelope that I shot in Kansas this year. I'm going to go make bratwurst out of it at my brother-in-law's place. Nice. And we're using all your guys' products. Cool. And it's, yeah, that's going to be our Saturday. So. That's, I mean, that's exactly why Austin started this entire meat logistics thing. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it is. It's fun and we get everybody involved and it's, yeah, it's just an extension of it. Just makes your season year round. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. And then you get to eat it. Which is well, there's also that layer of like, I think I can get to the point of hunting and you go hunting, but now there's this layer of intimidation of what do I do now? Yeah. You know, do I just take it to a processor? Can I do this on my own? What's realistic? What's not? So. Yeah. And it's, you know, I mean, and some people, like you said, never get past the point of I'm just going to take it to a processor. Mm -hmm. And we do have, we do have some amazing processors in this mm -hmm. town. I'll plug Street Locker. I oh, think they're for amazing sure. um, for what you can do and when the product that they get. Um, but yeah, there is something satisfying, you know, about making mm -hmm. your own, you know, it, it just is. So yeah, the feel a weird amount of pride when I serve somebody here oh. or something They're like, oh, that's so good. I mean, multiply that many, mm -hmm. many times when it's something you harvested, yeah. made and gave to somebody. It's a great, great yeah. feeling. It's like one thing to go on the hunt. It's another thing to share the story. But then it's another thing to yeah. like plate it up and say, here you go. There you go. You know, it, <laughs> venison diplomacy is always yeah. the best thing. And Kurt <laughs> talks about it all the time. And it is. It's, you know, how many people have I met that are like, I don't like deer. It's because you never had it cooked correctly. Somebody didn't take care of it. Right. Cattle would taste awful if if somebody took care of it the way that deer was taken care of. Yep. Yeah, you know, and it's the sure. first time you could serve them something. It totally changes their outlook mm -hmm. on wild game. And that that's awesome. I mean, I think mm -hmm. I've converted. I wouldn't say people that are going to hunt or even anti hunters, just people who didn't really know anything of it, but they pay attention now. You know, whenever yeah. hey, you know, this is important. We need to keep this tradition and heritage alive. Yeah. You know, and yes, please enjoy that backstrap. Because yeah, I'll keep bringing it if we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so. so backstrap would be your before we leave. I will give you a bag of have you had paws black bull seasoning yet? Mm -mm. Oh, mm. it's an injectable. Oh, yeah. and that with a, a backstrap is up there with my favorite of all meats. Like doesn't matter beef, whatever. Yeah, I love you inject it. Let it sit overnight. 
and then smoke it the next day. Oh, nice. Yeah. So good. Yeah, that's, I know. I, I wish a deer was about 20 feet long. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Don't we I, all? Is what I want. <laughs> so, backstrap yeah, all the exactly. way. Yeah, exactly. a big tube of backstrap. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so how many hunts did you take kids on last year? So this last year, man, 2020 was hard. Yeah, I, yeah it was. I, it was. It was. I, well, I, just, you're a healthcare worker. Yeah, I'm a healthcare worker. And it's, we were in a, especially at the hospital I work at, I mean, we were, it, it was pretty tight there mm -hmm. for a while, you know, what, even what we were allowed to do with people. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to expose anything, especially to kids. Um, yeah, we got, you know, on my own, unfortunately I couldn't do any with outdoor mentors, mm -hmm. but it's not for a lack of trying. For sure. We had people lined up for the turkey hunts yep. too. And it was just, that was a punch in the canceled. face. Yeah. Yep. It just kept, yeah. And it was, I know it was one of those things that we kept saying, but we're outside, mm -hmm. we're outside and it's, yeah. But yeah, we, we we flirted with that line too. Like, well, do we just err on the side of extra caution yeah. and just not can't schedule anything? I'm like, yeah. man, that's like an injustice, especially yeah. with so many kids being home. I know. Nothing to do. Parents being home with nothing to do. People are retreating to the outdoors. So it's like, why would we not just kind of step in and fill this this void and just say, hey, if you're sick, you're not going to be penalized or we're not yeah. going to be mad at you if you can't go. Right. You yeah. know, if you um, all of a sudden don't want to go because you might have been exposed and now you have to quarantine until that person figures out their test, that's cool too. We're yeah. Again, we'll get you back on a different hunt and, and that transparency, I think, with our mentors and kids um, that we were able to get out this year, I think, yeah. has gone a long way because people have just been really mindful. But I don't feel good. I'm not coming. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, is it just because it's early in the morning yeah. and all of a sudden you don't feel good or? Yeah. yeah. So we've had to drill it into people's heads here. If you don't feel good, do not come into work. Like, yeah. Doesn't matter if you've had it, if, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it took a while. I mean, there were people who were coming in like, why are you here? Mm -hmm. like, you don't seem to be feeling good. Please go home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Isn't that a weird culture we've created in America? Yes. It really is. It's go, work it at all costs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's, so yeah. I despise missing work for being sick. Yeah. My thought process is I already don't feel well. I'm not going to feel any better laying at home. So I'll just go into work. I'll and, be productive. Yeah. Do something with the day. So it took a while to kind of change mm -hmm. the mindset on that. Um, did you have either one of you had it? Unfortunately. Yeah. You did? Yeah. I did not. You've not had it. Man, I'm Good telling for you. you. I lived, of course, I lived in PPE trash bags everything yeah. else with my work i mean ventilators a whole thing on us really? yeah space suits the whole thing yeah i never got it good Th never had the antibodies or anything okay mm -hmm. so you've been tested for that oh yeah good yeah, i've had my vaccine my you know tick dip dewormed the whole thing i'm good to go <laughs> which yeah and that's just it i yeah i was lucky and just never had it so good. what was your experience with it uh, it was not the greatest, but it wasn't the worst thing. Yeah. I lost my taste and smell. That was the worst thing, I think. It sucks when you wake up one day and you go to brush your teeth. You're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't taste or smell my toothpaste. Did you have fever? Full, like No, full I was pretty foggy brained okay. and just like yeah. uh, a little congested. That was like the extent of it. My husband got it too, of course, but he was like, I call it man flu, but he was very achy, very yeah, yeah. flu like, very opposite of what I had. Um, so that's kind of interesting. But the food thing that just bugged me yeah. to high heaven. My wife lost her sense of taste and smell. That was really her only symptom. Yeah. Other than that, but she's oddly tough, like weirdly tough. Yeah. Um, I had it. I got tested through work and I called Austin. I'm like, I know I don't have it. So I'll be in later today. But then I had nothing to do, so I just took a nap. And then I woke up after that like three hour nap and I was like, oh no, I feel like I'm gonna die. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. this is not really, but I'm like, this is terrible. It didn't feel good. So I called him, I'm like, listen, even if I'm clear, I'm not coming in today. And then it came back that I had it. Mm -hmm. I started taking vitamin D, zinc, yeah. and the real all-star or all-star was the Alka-Seltzer, severe cold and flu. Really? Take one of those and not even like, I felt perfect. I felt. Huh. All through the whole thing, I only felt bad for about four hours. That's good. And then it was 14 or 10 days. Of I was going to say, home. and then you oh, had to sit it. there on your couch Ugh. and work. <laughs> yeah, you're in fantastic shape, though, because we're like the hospital. We're dealing with young people that are yeah. having long term cardiac effects with it. Yeah. So and that's that that's going to be the, the long term effects of this are going to be interesting mm. on people. That that's sucks. So mm -hmm. what do you think is 
is causing that micro clot micro clotting with this virus is what it's doing throwing micro clots and you're getting mm. coronary or you're, you're getting things that look like coronary artery disease with it and you're also getting like tia strokes with it you're getting um you're also going to be getting things that you know people like their lungs when we look at them with x-rays and cts you, you're taking a healthy person who has it and if they get that the real bad infection in their lungs it looks like they smoked 40 years worth of cigarettes Gosh. in a week so the COPDs and the and the chronic bronchitis we're going to get off of this is going to be it's going to be a little scary. And mm-hmm. you said something even like a healthy person. Yes. Who, okay. Yeah, even healthy people. And it's you know, but it, it matters how bad you had it. But mm-hmm. it's just yeah. I mean, at, at my work, what I do, I've seen a lot of pretty healthy looking people come in and be like, man, your heart is working really hard and it mm-hmm. shouldn't be. I mean, just stuff that yeah. And it's we have no underlying issue besides you were COVID positive. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, no genetic family histories, no anything, you know, it's just, it's, it's not looking good, but I mean, you know, I'm not saying that te- in the healthcare world, everybody I see is sick. That's what I always yeah. tell people, you know, in my, it's the worst case scenario for everything. I mean, it is, it's, it's frightening no matter what, but yeah, that's just what we're saying. All right. So what do you guys have coming up in the future? A full calendar. We've got <laughs> again, turkey hunts on the calendar all through the month of April and probably into some, some May. Um, dates, but we also have been kicking around um, how to get BHA more involved. Yes. And Gabe and I have talked about, you know, once summer rolls around doing some squirrel hunts, you know, maybe yep. doing some bullfrogging. Yes. Ju- uh, awesome. Yes. Yeah, squirrel starts in June. It does. And then I've convinced Brittany, even though she said, I'm not a big fan of eating them. July yeah. is bullfrogging season. And yeah, it's I, growing up, we did that in Southeast Kansas. So it's, yeah, it is a lot of fun. Something to go out at night with a flashlight. It's, it's for, fun. And for the squirrels, for anyone who's not tried to hunt a squirrel and you're thinking of a suburban squirrel okay. no these are not that. No. these are not trash can squirrels they no. know that you're out there yeah. for them yes they will spend half an hour running around a tree just mm-hmm. to stay on the other side mm-hmm. they know what you're out there for yeah. they're an extremely annoyingly wily <laughs> animal yeah they are an interesting <sighs> animal man they are there's so much you can learn from hunting but if you'd ask a kid off the street if they knew they could go squirrel hunting what do you think they'd say you can't shoot those things. Can't they they live that. in our neighborhood, right? right? Uh, like, yeah. but no, really, there is like a season for them. Yeah, it's part of it's part of the heritage. Oh yeah, it's yeah. cool, and they're delicious. Yeah, <laughs> it's great stew meat. Yeah, it yeah, it's really good. Is yeah. good stew meat. There's a meat eater recipe for making like buffalo chicken wings out of them, oh, and yeah, I did that. Cool. Yeah, from their last cookbook. It's awesome. It's fantastic. Yeah, that guy's a a wizard. And like yeah. he said, you know, Steve said he goes, you know, I find if I found somebody who's eating a buffalo squirrel wing, I find them more of an interesting person than if it was a chicken wing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, dude, that totally. I guess. For that's sure. Accurate. Yeah. That's so accurate. yeah, it'll be uh like I said, it'll be fun. We can go throughout yeah. the entire year with kids right. on something. There's even like bow fishing opportunities right. and all kinds of stuff that oh, and you can do so much. The department has a trailer full of bow fishing rigs that are available to use. You just have to check them out. So, like, God, so let's uh we're gonna get kind of uncomfortable i think this summer and do some things we've not ever done yeah. before and i'm pumped yes. Bull fishing's awesome so i've got i live on a pond in a neighborhood um i've got grass carp that are like over 36 inches i mean they're huge but they won't bite on literally anything i've tried mm-hmm. people told me elderberry mm-hmm. i mean corn does not work on these type of carp <laughs> um i've tried just putting the hook out there, seeing if they'll like grab it because it's flashy. Yeah. They won't touch anything. We're friends with the chief of police. I'm like, what would you do if you saw me out in that pond bow fishing? He's like, oh no, don't do that. <laughs> I would join you. I want to yeah. kill these things. Yeah. So bad. Um, all right. So what well, else do you got? You're invited to our next bow fishing clinic. Whenever we okay. get it scheduled, yeah. so you can do that legally. <laughs> you realize you, you'll need an adult to supervise yes. me too, though. Okay. His name's Gabe. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, I'd say that's another thing I'd love to do in the summer is bow fish. Yeah, it's so much fun. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. You've got other things coming up. Yeah. Though, we've got our 19th annual bus to clay for kids sake. Yeah, it's the best. I feel like we just had it. We did. Because we had to push yep. it. So it's like we just had it, I think, what, in August? And now we're having it in May. So it's kind of like, weren't we just here? But I'm kind of like, bring it on. Absolutely bring it on. That is my favorite event of the year. Flint Oak so is excited. just this like majestical, magical, whimsical place yep. you go to. And you're like, no one else is here besides me. And so it's cool. It's May 7th and 8th, Friday, Saturday. Um, we are continuing this year with individual day shooters. So if you want to come for 175 bucks, mm-hmm. pay, shoot for the full day, you get lunch, covers your ammo and your targets. You can participate in our raffle still. Um, if you want to stay Friday night into Saturday, it's $500. You can write your own check if you want or raise pledges. We make it really easy for folks to come. And 
we're going to have uh, Nick Hoffman, you know, Nick's we wild do. ride. Yeah. So Nick is going to be making a special appearance. He was supposed to make it this last year, yeah. but COVID again, switched, shifted everything around. So we're pumped to have him this year. So uh, we're tying to Nick uh, where we sponsor him and we've been trying to get him on the podcast. Mm-hmm. He was in the area and we were talking about coming in on a Sunday and doing it because that was the only day. But then an ice storm was coming through and we're mm-hmm. like, all right, just go, you know, go home. We'll, we'll make it happen later. That Monday, I tested positive for COVID. No. I was like, oh, thank God I didn't get Nick sick. Yeah. Like, oh, that, well, here's your chance. Well, it, yeah. I've already been sick there. I won't get him sick this time. Right, but here's your chance to get him on the podcast. Yeah. Oh, no, he's going to yeah. come in hopefully before then. Good. But even if not, we'll make that work. Because talk about a guy who does everything. I mean, you, you can't have that much time. I don't know. No. Does he never stop? I'm going to say yes. Ah, never. Oh, yeah. real. It's impressive. Oh. We're pumped. So I'm hoping he's going to bring some good synergy, and I know yeah. he will. Just yeah. talking about him now, I'm, like, excited to, like, have a tent out there jamming out to Nick Hoffman. It's just – it's going to create a new little flair to it. So we're looking forward to that. Cool. Yeah. So um, that's in May. Big Al's birthday bash, May 15th, Union Stockyards. You, it's in the okay yeah wichita union stockyards yeah, big red barn can't miss it yeah um super excited about that be fun country boot scoot and boogie night and then uh look forward to announcement for june we're gonna have a oh sorry july we're gonna have a golf tournament cool. with whitetail properties so where are you doing that uh up in newton at uh, sand creek station okay mm-hmm. cool yeah lots of stuff happening that's yeah. good it Seems like you took last year to regroup, like you said. Yes. And you're coming out all guns blazing. Yes, we are. That's great. We are. We're running 100 miles an hour. It's fun. <laughs> I always say I'd rather be stressed from having too, too much, much to do yeah. than not enough. Because mm-hmm. yeah. that's a bad feeling. Yep. So. Yep. Well, and we're 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 running out of time, right? Like we're we only have yeah. so much time to pass on the sport of hunting to these yep. kids. Every year they get older, they get less interested. So, time's now. Yeah, you can still grab them later, though. I mean, you it, can. It you possible. for sure nope. can recruit. I think I would like to see what the odds are recruiting a, a high schooler versus a college versus a person who just got married. Mm-hmm. You know, going to get ready to start a family. Yeah, probably does good. Time down. management yeah. kind of goes out the window for I think that older demographic. So if you can catch them younger, catch kids younger, get them excited yeah, and passionate about it. Ahead. So when they go to college, they're like, "Oh, I'm going to get involved with that BHA group because yep. I know." They'll hold me accountable and invite yeah. me to things. Yep. Yeah, it is a, a very specific person who joins BHA. At least that's what it I. It is. After the first thing we had with you, which I think was the sausage class. Yeah. Kurt and I were talking after that. I'm like, that was a group of really in shape people. Mm-hmm. Like everybody there was in good shape, and like it wasn't a couple of weeks later you got your demographics back, and you're a very young. Very. Yeah. We are, as we always say, you know, we're people that are willing to do a lot. We don't have a lot of cash. <laughs> That's the deal. <laughs> I'll but pick that but up. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we are willing to do a lot. We're a boots on the ground organization. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going to see us kind of like here in, let's see, March 20th, we're doing a cleanup at Cheney Lake. Mm-hmm. Um, going to be doing an all day cleanup. You know, we do a lot of projects like that. A lot of wildlife restoration projects, a lot of cleanup projects, a lot of things, especially with COVID. The amount of people that used our state parks and used these wildlife areas oh, was yeah. incredible. It was absolutely incredible. Unfortunately, with a lot of people comes a lot of mess. So it's, you know, it, conservation groups and a lot of people are stepping up to clean up those areas. So, you know, we yeah. can continue to enjoy them in the future. Um, we just need volunteers. We just need people to say, hi, I'm willing to give a few hours out of my day on a weekend to help. Pick we up do trash. The, yeah, we will do the organization. All you got to do is just show up and and you're going to meet a lot of good people. Yep, You really will. Um, you know, we do a lot of events with you guys. I believe, what is it? May 1st, we're doing the, the 2000 mile, um, film that's going to be here. That's going to be a great big thing. It's going to be an awesome event on, on a Saturday. It's going to be outside. You guys, you know, we're really looking forward to to that. Um, and just, yeah, we've got a, got a lot of stuff planned that, I don't know if you guys are aware yet, <laughs> but boy, do we have plans. So, get excited. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure once yeah. Colton gets back, we'll get yeah. into more of that. Yeah. But, yeah. No, we absolutely love working with both your organizations. Mm-hmm. So. Thank you so much. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah. Is there anything else? Uh, check us out online. Yeah. Outdoormentors.com.org. Sorry. <laughs> and we'll put uh, the links to that down in the bottom if you're watching on YouTube yeah. or on the Meet Just Post if yeah. you're just listening. There's yeah. a sign up to hunt with us. You can sign up as a kid or as a mentor. So, so how if it's a kid whose parents aren't interested, 
do they have to go through their parents to request yeah, it? Yeah, there, yeah. That yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah, it really does. Yep. If you're a, if you're a minor, you have to have your parents sign off on on everything. Okay, well, that's how it should be. Yeah. All right. Anything else? I want to say, you check us out at Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. Oh, just on the web. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, pretty much everything. Everywhere. So everywhere. So we encourage you guys to come to our events, you know, join for a great cause. And we are always hooked up. So Kansas, everybody knows everybody. Yes. So yeah, it seems like if you join one organization, I mean, yeah, we're so, you know, also belong to Ducks Unlimited and Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. I mean, it just yep. seems like we're all involved in everybody's stuff. So yeah, it's, it's it seems like you join one and you get to be a part of everything. Mm -hmm. You really do. They so, get you pulled in. Yeah, they do. But, you know, get you outdoors, get you signed up for hunting's future. That's the big thing. So, for yep. sure. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, check us out at meetgistics and waltonsinc.com. Thanks for checking out the Meatgistics podcast. To shop everything but the meat, head on over to waltonsinc.com. And to get your meat processing questions answered by experts and enthusiasts alike, head on over to our online community at meatgistics.com. Waltons, everything but the meat.